Okay, let's try this again. Take two. Please, somebody tell me that you can hear me. Um, hopefully, you are all able to see and hear the start of episode 418 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, um, coming to you live, hopefully coming to you live on YouTube. Um, I hear you, says Ricardo. The, the annoying thing with these YouTube things, and, and YouTube has been quite glitchy for me lately. I mean, even now, as I'm looking down at the monitor, it seems as though the camera is doing this sort of weird jumpy thing, or the, or the, the video is doing this sort of weird jumpy thing that it's been doing lately. Um, the, the, the frustrating thing with YouTube is that I am not doing anything differently here. So I didn't change anything about the setup from a few minutes ago when I went live, but you could, didn't hear me. All I did was I shut down the stream and I started another one. And now it seems to be okay. But that if, if you do something wrong and you realize you've done something wrong, you think, okay, well, you know, next time it was my fault. Next time I must remember to not do such and such a thing. But But when you haven't done anything different and things go wrong, that becomes really, really irritating because you think, well, how can I stop this from happening again? Um, but anyway, welcome to episode 418. And like I said in the silent version of this episode that went out a few minutes ago, this is the final one of our seasonal top tens. We did spring, summer, autumn, and now it is time for our list of the top 10 cents for winter 2023 because winter is just around the corner. Um, but it also means that the shortest day is just around the corner. I had got as far as saying who the first comment was from, and the first comment for the, the other video video was Woozy's. Um, but who's the first comment here? Jeff says, Papa, can you hear me? Woozy says, Papa, can you see me? Um, Alien on Beauty says, still looking forward to today's video. Well, hopefully it is working now. And I have just noticed that the beautiful sapin candle from Diptyque has the carousel for some reason has stopped spinning and that makes no sense whatsoever. The only thing I can think is because maybe we're in a bit of a confined space, there isn't enough of a sort of convection current that, that this can create. So go figure, no sound and carousel that won't spin. Shall we just kind of help it along? Um, because it was spinning beautifully until now and I thought that might be a nice addition to the video. Oh, that's, that's not very well balanced, is it? Or is it gonna be one of these videos? Is it gonna be one of those videos? Okay, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, then what you have seen so far is absolutely not going to make you want to subscribe to this channel or watch any future videos. But if there is still some part of you that would consider subscribing, then please do so and click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos. And if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you should be able to see a link to my coffee page in the video description below. Lots and lots of you here. Um, lots of you commenting about the candle. Uh, the video is definitely jumpy and not synchronized, says Keith. Yes, and I think that has been the case for the last two videos, and that is extremely annoying because, um, I, because there is nothing different about this setup. In fact, I've actually, I'm actually relying less on the, the Wi-Fi than I normally would, and I've sort of gone for wired connections, uh, doesn't make sense and it's annoying to those of us on YouTube who like to make use of the live function. Um, video is okay for me, says Rachel, um, which makes it even more, more bizarre. Uh, Helen White says, hello from uh, rainy Brooklyn all, just blamed husband streaming soccer for sound issues. <laughs> okay, have you gone and apologized to him now? Um, the perfume is my what? My soccer one sword. I have no idea what that means. Um, Dolores says did not have sound with the last connection. No, no, that that was that was no nobody had sound. Okay, so um, the plan for this video is for us to go through ten cents for winter twenty twenty three. But also just looking ahead, um, some of you may want to make a note of the fact that I will be doing my top 10 of the year, uh, probably on the 29th of December, but it may be on the 30th. I will let you know as soon as I have decided, but it's certainly going to be one of those two dates. And uh, between today and the next sort of week or so, I'm going to try to get in one, maybe another, maybe two review videos, just so as, so as to get as many reviews as possible out of the way. And then we'll sort of go on a, a kind of Christmas break, come back, on the 29th or the 30th with the uh, with the end of year top 10 
And then I will see you in the new year. Two interviews already lined up for January. Two very, very, very interesting ones. Um, I think we should get going. Now, regular viewers will know that the seasonal top tens always have a, a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a theme, a loose kind of conceptual binding thing. Um, and it's often a reflection of the state of mind I happen to be in at the time when I'm coming up with the list, or maybe what's happening out there in the world, or something particular that I'm looking forward to. And for this one, I immediately, I started with one perfume, and it's actually the perfume that I'm going to save for the very end, for, for position number 10. Um, and and because I immediately thought, right, I want to smell this again. I want to smell this, and I want to put it in my top 10 for winter 2023. Um, and then I thought, well, why, why that one in particular? And I got this sense that maybe the thing that is calling me about that particular perfume at the moment is that it conveys a sense of a very, very, very ancient, timeless wisdom and authority, you know, almost like going you know, to, you know, to the sort of wise old woman or the wise old man in the tribe um, and seeking their wisdom, seeking their advice, and, and probably getting some kind of a cryptic response from them, but, but, but a response that is, unambiguous enough for you to to have something concrete to act on. Why is this thing not spinning? It was spinning absolutely fine in the other room before I before I brought it here. It has to be the room. Somebody from somebody from Diptyque is now going to contact me and say why are you showing off a defective product? I can assure you it is not a defective product and it looks beautiful when it spins as you can see, but it, it must be something to do with them, um, with where we are, because I know that these, it's a very, very delicate carousel, and I think um, they, they're very, very sensitive to, to, to air currents. Um, lots and lots of you writing already, do, do top 10 worst, I know I, w I won't do a top 10 worst, I won't do, because, because it would be far too difficult to, to, to restrict it to 10. Um, okay, I think we should start, and I'd like to start with with one that that sums up this idea quite well. It's not it's not the one that that, that first came to my mind. Um, from uh, nineteen ninety five, and by the way, um, if you have got any sense that you can think of that that convey this sort of timeless wisdom, um, sagacity, um, then please let me know which ones they would be. But from nineteen ninety five, composed by Christopher Sheldrake, um, this is uh, La Mire from Serge Lutens. Emma says, it would be fun to have a top 10 God list, like what perfumes God would be associated with. Gosh, that would be interesting. You know, d divine perfumes. But but I suppose you mean God in that sense of authority figure. Um, I got a, I've got a sample of La Mire on the way, says Spaced Out. Um, let's, I, I, I love this sense. So as I say, from, from the mid 90s, um, I, I don't, smell this enough, I don't wear it enough. Um, I partly blame the brand because wearing the ones that are in the, the bell jars is a little bit tricky. Um, I'll tell you what, because this is annoying me, I'm going to, now you mustn't ever blow out your candle, okay? You obviously need to snuff it out, but we're just gonna do it now. Because I think that just kind of looks wrong that it's lit, but it's not spinning, so at least that looks better. Anyway. Plus the pine smell, exactly. I kind of maybe maybe doing a scented candle when you're trying to talk about perfumes isn't the best thing, but, but it is a beautiful pine candle. Um, okay, La Mire from Lutens. <sighs> mm. uh, Rachel says this is a great theme. Definitely, one could pick a few of Sheldrake's works on this list. Well, there is another Sheldrake coming, actually. Interestingly enough, you're very very right. I mean, I could have I, I could have picked lots of Sheldrake's. Um, La Mire is, in a way, like taking Chanel number no. five, but instead of instead of having it sort of floral and sandalwoody in the base, it's it's resinous and um, and and it's got myrrh in the base. So it 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 is strangely, unexpectedly, and yet beautifully, an aldehydic myrrh, and you when you smell it. I think the first time you smell it, you're taken aback actually by how aldehydic it is, because the, aldehy the aldehydes really, really don't hold back. Hold back. They are really, really bright, 
sparkling, um, you know, that, that whole kind of lights flashing, light bulbs going off, Chanel number no. five thing. And yet you immediately feel that something else is going to be at play in the bass and that this isn't by any means a Chanel number no. five clone. Of course, Sheldrake knows a thing or two about number no. five. I wonder if he did in the 90s, though. I, I don't know if he was already working at Chanel. No idea. Somebody will be able to tell me, I'm sure. Um, and it feels like the smell of a truly, truly ancient mountain. And maybe there's a cave and you go inside the cave and there's a glow from a fire and, you know, some kind of Gandalf type figure is sitting there. Um, it's so interesting and meditative, says Rachel. No, it completely is. And very, very, very wise. Um, there is something ancient that comes through in, in that kind of resinous base. Um, you almost feel like you need to be worthy of wearing it. No, it, it, it is just beautiful. Really, really, really love it. Um, one of the highlights of the Lutens collection. I didn't stop to check whether it's still part of the collection. I believe um, it is. Oh, Maudlin says Gandalf, pre or post Balrog, or post, post. So this is, does he become Gandalf the White? Is that right? Have I got my my stories right? Because he's Gandalf the Grey first, and then he becomes White somebody, with somebody I'm sure will tell, but, uh, but post, post Balrog, Gandalf. Um, how you are meant to apply the bell jar perfumes to skin, says Jade. Well, I mean, you know, you could you could literally sort of do a thing like this where you go like that and then dab that onto your skin. A lot of people decant these into little sprays. I've I have been known to do that. Um and then it's got it's got that slight element of something a little bit wrong where the myrrh presents its its fungal aspects quite well. It's 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 just wonderful, really, really genius. Um, <clears throat> Sharon says, I do wish they offered La Mire in a format other than the bell jar. Yes, well, write to Uncle Serge and see what he says. Okay, so that sets the tone. What have we got next? Next is a perfume that came out a couple of years ago as an EDP, um, but came out this year in the form that I'm going to show you now, and I'm pretty sure I reviewed it a few months ago. A little known sort of brand, but I thought this actually fits the bill. So from Alexandre J, Alexandre J, this is their Black Beetle X-Tray. So there's a Black Beetle EDP. The X-Tray came out this year. In the UK, I think these are um, exclusive to Harrods. Really, really beautiful presentation, if you don't mind over-the-top presentation, which I don't. Um, and... These have been a bit overlooked these this year, these X-rays. They're, they're really, really attractive. And as I was getting ready for this video, I actually sprayed this one just on the back of my hand here. And it's, so this was sprayed maybe, I don't know, three hours ago or so. And it dries down <clears throat> really, really beautifully. Um, so it starts off, it starts off making you think that it's going to go down a kind of plummy, syrupy fruit sort of note. Um, in fact, it's kind of plummier on, on, on paper than it is on skin. Um, but there is a lot more authority to it than you would expect. And you soon get into a really, really sort of generous, warm-hearted, kind-spirited, tonka bean heart and really, really nice patchouli in the base. Um, and black, black beetle, I... I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get the, the, the reference, but I suppose um, it, it makes you think of creatures and living things that have been on this planet for centuries and centuries and centuries. There's something quite quite hardy and indestructible about the black beetles, something a, attractive, but also sort of off-putting at the same time. And so that ties, tied in with all of the ideas that I was trying to conjure with this list of um, something that could symbolize all sorts of ideas of, of of timelessness and indestructibility. Uh, Lilian must be on the list. Um, well, I'm going to tell you now that actually it isn't, that there isn't a Chanel. I thought maybe I, because I'm very, very kind to Chanel on these lists, and brands like Chanel and, and Dior very often get included, but um, not this time, not this time. Lilian would have been a good one, although I personally think that Lilian is maybe just a little bit too randy 
to be on this list. I think this is this is about this is about that kind of you know authority figure that the the you know some some somebody like Samson, okay. Um, but no, Lillian Lillian still got some wild oats to sow. I think. Um, Diaghilev is on the list, says Dusan. No, but something that is related to it is on the list. Um, Randy vocabulary throwback, says Gavin. Not so much wisdom in a Leo, Lin, Le, Leon to me, says Maudlin. Um, yeah, so if you, I mean, these these are not um, cheap, although they're nowhere near as expensive as some perfumes out there at the moment. So um, if you if you get an opportunity to to check out the Alexandra J range, then please do so. Now, what are you folks saying? I so want to try Alexandra J fragrances to us. Tamara. You should. Uh, do you smell the chili pepper in Black Beetle? Says Jade. More so on skin. Yes, it does come out to an extent. Um, Tower 03 for sure, says Milad. Now, which one is Tower 03? Is that Lone Star Memories? I mean, there, there aren't any towers on the list either. I think 03 is, is Lone Star. Uh, Rachel says, this makes me think of Zoologist's uh, Sacred Scarab. Yeah, good good, good call there. Um, Coromandel is my winter fragrance, says Rebecca. That's a beautiful Christopher Sheldrake composition as well. Aventus Absolute, maybe, says Milad. Maybe not. Um, Oris says, I'm thinking maybe Floraiku's The Moon, uh, uh, sorry, The Moon and I might be my pick for this list, like visiting a Zen sage for a green tea service in a cedar grove. I love that description. Um, we don't have a Floraiku here, but yes, it's that kind of thing we're trying to, we're trying to conjure. What's next? What's next? Next. Now this one, I, I, I genuinely don't know, oh dear, <laughs> nearly dropped them all. I don't know if this one is still around, but I thought, okay, well, if somebody really, really wants to try it, they should be able to source it somewhere. I think it might still be available in, in some markets. From 1998, if it has been discontinued, then that's a real shame. From 1998, composed by the one and only Annick Minardo, this is the EDP of um, Boucheron's Jaipur Pouron. Um, I wore it again the other day um, and was just reminded how great it is. It I think I, I don't know how well it did. I I adored it from the, the moment it came out. Uh, ah, love Jaipur says uh, Saint Genie. Jaipur is a beauty. I'm so glad you agree. I don't know how it did, but I suspect that if it didn't do very well, I mean, it certainly didn't become like a household name, did it? But I think if it didn't do well, it may have been that it probably came across already as a little bit dated. In the 90s. In fact, when I found out, when I looked up its dates and saw that it was 98, I was a little bit surprised because it feels like a sort of early 80s, uh, late, sorry, late 80s, early 90s scent. Um, it, it, it's kind, it, it's got that sort of big, um, broad-shouldered thing, but it's also extremely gentle. Even though it's authoritative, even though it is broad-shouldered, even though it's got that kind of you know square-cut jaw. By the way, these descriptions do not in any way mean that I think a, a, a woman wouldn't be able to wear it. I mean, absolutely, I think it would be fascinating on a woman. Um, so even though it, it is presenting those sort of more authoritative facets, there is such a gentleness to it as well. There's the really, really nice interplay between these kind of powdery notes, again, maybe something aldehydic, and strong, strong resins and woods in the base. I was having a conversation with somebody a little while ago about kind of no holds barred aldehydic scents that could also be unashamedly masculine like for instance um Chanel number no. 5 au premier i think works extremely well on men although that was never marketed as a masculine um this is that kind of thing uh, what which is the other one that can, is it is it is it lyric or dear man that's quite aldehydic i can't remember i mean obviously gold man is is all out aldehydic and and brilliant, um, but this is Jaipur Om is 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 doing that kind of aldehydic powdery, sweetly vanillic woody thing as well, um, and this is what kind of sage would this be? So we had we you know we had Gandalf in the cave. This is the sort of I don't know ancient Egyptian. Uh, priest that you go and visit just outside the pyramid or something and the the boucheron i suppose 
I mean, I guess, I guess maybe we'll just go with a reference in the name and think of some kind of, you know, wise man somewhere outside the Pink Palace in Jaipur. I so wish, I so hope I will be able to see that Pink Palace one day again. I've got such fond memories of visiting Jaipur, such a beautiful place to go to. Um, Jaipur is a more martial sage, says City Slacker. Yeah, I suppose so. If you, if you, but, but, well, I'm, I'm an Indian now. I'm in India, so I'm going, I'm going, I'm going with India. What's the conversation doing now, though? Uh, Sophie says, on bell jars. Just got a bell jar of Serge Lutin's De Profundis. I didn't think I'd like applying it without an atomizer, but turns out this form lends a ritualis <coughs> ritualistic aspect that feels right. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, actually. Um, Sophie says, how about l'eau d'hiver or après l'onde for the season? I mean, I would never say to anybody, don't wear that. I mean, they're, they're two of my favorite perfumes. We have got a Garlin coming, but it's not après l'onde. We don't have a Frederick Mal this time. Uh, Rachel says, Neil Vermeer's work could fit on this list, in my opinion. Totally. Um, Trahi, Ashoka, absolutely. Um, Jaipur EDP, says Omar, gives me hints of Shalimar, a spicy daily wear Shalimar. I mean, yes, completely, because in that sense, it is it, it, it's it, it is it's, it's a very very classic amber scent really but okay we've only done three and we need to move on what was number four on the list for winter number four number four number four okay number four is a much more recent one but number four kind of takes us to keeps us in india because from 2021 uh, this is composed by monsieur olivier cresp it's incarnation from Lilanor, still one of my favorites from the brand i reviewed their um, recent their most recent release zafran Boise just the other day, and smelling that and reviewing that made me think of incarnation and how beautiful it really is. Uh, let's have let's have a let's have a reminder. Let's have a spray. Any of you out there know it? Um, where can we put that? Let's pop that on here. Can you still see that? Yes, you can. On my monitor here, the video is still doing a lot of jumpy jumpy, for which I can only apologise. I don't know if it's okay for you. I'm going to have to look into whether there's there are any articles out there or any forums about live streams being affected. Um, anyway, incarnation. This is a gentle wisdom, says Rachel. What a lovely fragrance. Well, let's go, I agree with you, let's go with the idea and the name. And, you know, maybe this is this, this is the wisdom of, of an old soul, you know, somebody who's been reincarnated several times and has come back and is and is now in their sort of final stage before before um before achieving enlightenment. Um, the stream isn't jumpy for me, says Smarks. No jumps here, says Rebecca. Okay, well, I'm pleased, but but perplexed. Oh, well, long may that last then. Uh, uh, is it Rake? Or I'm, I'm guessing that the way we pronounce your name isn't Rake, although that would be a very cool name. It says, hello, first time catching a live stream. You're very, very welcome. Binge watch the Masterclass playlist today. Ah, oh, was that you that I that left the comments? Thank you very much. Love from Hyderabad in India, which is one place that I have not had the pleasure of visiting. Reason to go back to India. Thank you very much for all of those comments, if, if it was you that left them. Um, so, incarnation is an old school sheep but done uh, obviously in a modern way. So instead of that kind of green metallic inky feel that you get from good old oak moss, here you've got a slightly sort of more camphoraceous, earthy, soil-like feel, I'm guessing through the use of lots of patchouli. Um, and Again, something at the top that it's that's difficult to describe, and that, I think that's why I love this fragrance because it's doing something tuberosy, something white florally, but also something sour. So this is a soul that has been through a lot in its um, reincarnation processes, um, which is a very appropriate thing to say. You know, a day after the doctor regenerated into whatever it is that you know the twenty eighth doctor now on 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 TV. Um, and I, th I think that's what I find intriguing about it. It reminds me a little bit as well of Dolce & Gabbana's Sicily, you know, that kind of old school, slightly angry and yet ultimately sedate jasmine um, and, and not world weary at all. Even though it has been through a lot, it is not world weary. It is still full of light and full of energy. Um, I think it's great. I really, really love it. And and 
I would like the brands to release more things like this, you know, things that don't necessarily name check an ingredient and are sort of overly focused around a single ingredient. Because I think this is still the only one of their perfumes that doesn't reference an ingredient in its name. Uh, what are you folks saying? Jade says, Persilase, how did you train your nose to recognize so many nuances? Did you always feel you had a good sense of smell? I don't know how to answer that one. I mean, I, because I because I sometimes think I don't have a particularly good sense of smell. And then, you know, members of my family will just tell me to be quiet and, and to accept that I have got a, a, a good sense of smell. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, when you have when it's your sense of smell, I guess you just kind of think it's normal. I'll tell you one thing that I am lucky to have, I think, and I don't think this is anything to do with training, but I do seem to have a very, very, very high odor hypogee... Her <laughs> I deem... <laughs> now I'm wishing there was no sound still. I have, I seem to have a very high odor habituation threshold. And so what that means is that um, I keep smelling the same smell for a long time without getting used to it. This is one of Madame Persilaise's main complaints about the perfumes that she wears. And a lot of people have this complaint, right? They say they, they spray something, after half an hour, they stop smelling it. That doesn't seem to happen to me. Um, th th there, are, there are some smells to which I get a bit nose blind and I kind of have to refresh my nose almost. But a lot of things, I keep smelling them and keep getting whiffs of them throughout the day. Now, is that just something that I was born with? Or is 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 it something that has come about as a result of always very, very consciously thinking about smells? And I think that's what I would say to you, um, that the, the, the best way to, to train your nose, as it were, is to train your brain and to constantly be thinking about what it is that you're smelling and trying to compare and you know, as soon as you, and it doesn't have to be perfume, right? It can be food and spices and places. As soon as you enter a new place, just make your, make yourself think, okay, that you are going to pick out a, a certain smell. And then when you go to a different place, what is that smell? The smell of a person. And maybe that process of bringing all of that to the foreground of my mind, rather than leaving it in the background, is the thing that makes me somewhat, to some extent, more able to pick out nuances. But, you know, there are lots and lots of nuances that I don't pick out, and that's why I love doing these videos live, because you will say something about um, a scent, and I'll think, gosh, I, I never, ever even considered that. So, you know, th there's picking out nuances, and there's picking out nuances. We, we were not, we're not any of us, you know, gas chromatography type machines. Um, C. Jane says, I've started smelling everything fragrant I encounter to help pick out scents. Yeah, that's a brilliant thing to do. And I think Victoria has got some tips on her Bois de Jasmin channel um, about how you can train your sense of smell. So do do check those out, because um, she knows what she's talking about. Um, that's exactly how we sommeliers are trained, Mr. P, says Rachel. Well, there you go. Um, thumbs up, please, friends. It really helps, Mr. P, says Stephanie. Oh, yes, give the video a like if, if you're enjoying it. Okay, we need to move on because we've only done four and we're, we need to get to the halfway mark. Number five, number five, number five. Oh, I love this perfume. I really, really adore this one. From 2012, composed by uh, Ralph Schwieger. Somebody said Diaghilev. Well, this is this is kind of my Diaghilev for you because this is from Etat Libre d'Orange. This is the afternoon of a fawn. Um so there's your Diaghilev reference. Um, oh, I need to, I, the, the reason, I mean, I have got a lot of this left, right? But to me, this kind of level of what's left is alarm bells ringing level. This is, this is the kind of, I need to have a backup bottle level. And because this bottle is from the original batch, there's already a bit of me thinking, oh my goodness, you know, it's been more than 10 years since this was released. Does that mean it's been reformulated because things have changed in the last 10 years? And would will I like the current batch? Scary, scary things <laughs> us perfume lovers have to go through. Um, love that scent, Mr. P, says Stephanie. I bought blindly based on your recommendation. Oh, that's very, very sweet of you to say. So thank you. I, I think it's wonderful. And I don't wear it enough. Um, speaking of old school sheep, this, this did or does the old school sheep thing, thing so well. But... But in a really, really unusual way. Because here, there is a lot of 
a lot of immortelle. Um, it's it's just so. It's, there's something so haunting, and you know, I said a few minutes ago that Le Lion is too randy to be on this list. This is this is, I guess, as the 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 the, the extent of the randiness that I will allow, because even though the fawn obviously has got at least one or two randy bones in his body, there's something. There's also something so innocent about this. Um, surely this one is randier than Le Lyon, says Eric. Well, I'm see, I'm thinking now. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's because maybe so, so this is this is the sort of which what what sage would this be? Who was the who was the um, wizard in Lord of the Rings? Who's like the sort of wizard of the forests and forest creatures? The one who I. I think was played by Sylvester McCoy. Somebody is going to tell me. I, I, I've got a name in my Radagast. Radagast the Brown. Thank you. I thought it was Radagast. It's th this is this kind of sage. Okay, so somebody who is very very much involved with the birds and the bees, and yet, um, at its core, you know, th th this is a persona that is all about wisdom and intelligence and being at one with nature. So that's the side of Afternoon of a Fawn we're going to go with today. Not the, the Randy side, not the Lillian side. Um, Barbara says, interesting, you lighted on my curiosity on incarnation. It's well worth checking out and, and see if the brand does a, a discovery set that they could post to your uh, to, to where, wherever you're based. I mean, I know they do do a discovery set, but they may not be able to ship it everywhere. Does patchouli stand out in this, says City Slacker? Yes, it does, but it's mostly immortel and a really, really interesting, strangely green, white floral type thing happening to. I get lots and lots of moss, even though it obviously can't be lots and lots of moss. But it's it's so convincingly a forest floor and a sort of forest sprite or a forest wizard. Um and, and I think it's genius. I absolutely think it's genius. Okay, so <clears throat> we have done five, five to go. You are watching episode 418 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays, on YouTube. And I should say, if you're enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up um, and keep the comments and the questions coming, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. Mm. And what else can I say to mark the, to mark the halfway point? Let me just read a few comments. Um, haven't tried that one yet, says Power Connection. Might have to buy a bottle. I guess you mean the Etat Libre d'Orange. Um, City Slacker says, I'm currently having an argument with patchouli, which is weird for me. Oh, interesting. Which perfume sparked off the argument? Um, Rake says, oh, it wasn't me who left the comments. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, somebody did. Somebody's been watching the masterclasses today as well. I lurk a lot and don't talk much, and it's pronounced... Um, it's pronounced rake. Oh, it is pronounced rake. Okay, sorry. And there's me trying to be all clever going rake. As it is an alias. Okay, well, I love the alias. Very much new to fragrances and glad to have found someone like you. Very, very kind of you to say so. Um, uh, Turn on says, en somitique uh, equals wisdom. Um, Yes, but I've completely gone blank about who makes that. You'll need to remind me what brand that is. Uh, Alcoholic Nun says, Mr. P, do you know of any stargazer lily scents? Um, not off the top of my head, I'm afraid. Okay, let's go to number six then. For number six, is this the oldest one on the list? Let me just see. No, it's not. No, it's not. Sorry. But it is pretty old. From 1925, some people say 1924, so it's either celebrating its 100th anniversary next year or the following year. Composed by the unbelievable Dean... <sighs> I'm so tired. The unbelievable dream team of François Coty and Vincent Roubert. This is, of course, Kinesia 10 from Kinesia. The ultimate leather scent, probably the first leather of this type, you know, much copied by, by Tom Ford Tuscan leather. I mean, so many, so many. This year we had a L'Artisan Parfumeur Cuir Grenat, which was very much of this, this sort of leather as well. Um, Really, really beautiful. Um, and I was so, so fortunate. Not that long ago, I found myself in Vienna. And so, of course, I bought a bottle, not this bottle, but I bought a new bottle from the Kinesia shop in Vienna, because that's where you've got to buy it, right? Um, 
but we'll do we'll do a Kinesia ten video soon. I think because it because it it it, it deserves it. Um, I found vintage Kinesia ten says Dusan Eau de Cologne. Oh wow, gosh. Um, Woozy says funny story, but the Australian retailer got ghosted by Kinesia ten when they asked for a restock. Really? <laughs> How bizarre. Um, oh, so this is. I've talked about these sorts of leathers a lot. It's one of my favorite types of scents, okay? So it, it's got it's got the sort of leathery, tannery, tangy materials that you would expect in the base. But what makes it interesting is an unexpected and also actually quite hard to detect tart fruit note at the top. So maybe something like a very, very sort of sharp biting strawberry or raspberry, but the effect is brilliant. And when you when you kind of see it, you get it, but but if nobody were to tell you that there's a kind of cheapish fruity note at the top, you, you're kind of quite blissfully unaware of it, and it's and it's not a problem that you're unaware of it. Um, but it's it's just fantastic. And this is, let's say, this is the wisdom of that very 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 rare beast, like you know the the the, the trustworthy politician, the idealistic politician. And I don't want to be sort of accused of looking through the past with rose-tinted glasses, but, you know, the kind of politician that that we now put up on a pedestal, you know, like a kind of Abraham Lincoln type figure. I mean, I'm sure he had his flaws too, and I'm sure he was as imperfect um, as the rest of us, and he probably made plenty of wrong decisions as well. But, but you know, he is held up as this kind of, you know, like ultimate president, ultimate ruler. So think of those sorts of authority figures. Um, Another one would be, you know, Boris Johnson, you know, that, that, I, I, yeah, <laughs> you know me well enough, right? Trump, no, let's just stick with Lincoln. Um, it, it's, it's somebody who projects effortless power, effortless authority, but also an effortless ability to control crowds and to get mass movements of people to achieve Good. Liz Truss, says Gavin. Yes, exactly. Just like Liz Truss. Um, the best politicians are from Bhutan, says Dusan. Okay, if that's a kind of a joke in there, I don't get it. Um, I don't know. Um, Kinesia 10 is a brilliant perfume. What kind of wisdom is it, says Rachel? Well, there you go. I've just I've just said. So insert insert name of favorite um inspiring politician. You know, some kind of, I don't know, Nelson Mandela figure when he became this wise sage. Although, you know. He was he was hardly flawless, right? Um, are we likening perfume to politics? Says Ryan. No, we're just going for one idealistic politician figure. Um, Mark says, "May your Christmas be wrapped in the essence of rare elegance, adorned with notes of warmth and cheer." Thank you very much. Same to you. May each fragrance you encounter tell a tale of joy with beautiful aromas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, trustworthy politician sounds like an oxymoron or oxymoron. Says Pat. Um, Yes, well, but this is great. And, and, and I love, love, love Kinesia 10. And again, another one that I should wear more often. Okay, so number seven on the list, number seven. Oh, Sharon, that's very, very kind of you. I always enjoy these perfume conversations. So do I. Very, very sweet of you. Thank you very much. Um, um, okay, where are we at? Number seven, number seven, number seven. Ah, somebody, somebody, somebody just mentioned Bhutan, didn't they? Which is a little bit odd. Uh, but this is from 2006, composed by Bertrand Duchafour for L'Artisan Parfumeur. This is, and I never know how you're meant to pronounce this. I looked it up once, but I think, I think it's, it's, is it Jonka? Um, and this is, so this is, this is the wisdom of monks somewhere in some I don't know, Tibetan monastery or some other monastery, you know, up in the Himalayas, just chanting, chanting, chanting away, absolutely filled with the conviction that their chanting and their prayers are going to make the world a better place. Um, uh, it's, it, it, it is wonderful. I don't even know if it's still part of the current uh, L'Artisan range, because that range has gone through a lot of changes lately, hasn't it? My favourite, finally, says Susanna, this is a great choice, says Rachel. I, I absolutely adore it. But what's interesting as well is that it's a perfume that goes through a real, real change curve. So when you first smell it, at least if you're me, you think, what is that strange 
borderline off-putting stewed vegetable note, you know, like leeks that have been overboiled and that are going to be like turned into some kind of leek and celery soup that you don't really fancy having. Um, but it just then becomes calmer and calmer and more tranquil and then starts humming, you know, it's almost like the perfume, perfume equivalent of, of the sound of om, you know, like this thrum that holds the world in place. It, that, it, it, this is the perfume, perfume equivalent of that. Um, and it's a fascinating take on incense because it's an incense that feels fuzzy. You know, usually incense as a note is so clean and sharp and streamlined and, and clear. This is, this is an incense that feels as though it's kind of emanating from the rough bark of some kind of dark, dark, dark wood. Um, something really, really ancient and gnarled. Um, and, and yet also somehow divine, you know, if, if we if we did that top 10 God list, I think I think Donka would have to be on it. Um, it's still on the Lartisan website, says Christine. Thank goodness for that. Gavin says, is this the wise man at the top of the mountain in Black Narcissus? <laughs> no, maybe it's the wise man um, in in Snake Dance. Here's a slightly slightly more um, more lowbrow reference for you. Donka is beautiful, says Sister Papa. Need to dig out my sample of it, says Sophie. Um, it is the official language of Bhutan, says Dusan. Well, I know. That's why I said how bizarre that you mentioned Bhutan. Um, ah, it's ancient, gnarled, and divine. Sounds like me, says Johnny Toblerone, <laughs> if you say so. Um, agree with Hausman Re Lartisan, says Sophie. Lartisan was what got me in the, into fragrance in the 2000s. I can't see the original. Oh, Donka is striking. Yeah. It's it is it is just amazing. So maybe maybe another one for me to have a backup bottle of. Okay, and I can't quite believe it, but we're already down to three. At number eight, uh, stolen from Madame Persolaise for the purposes of this video, composed by Josephine Catapano, the very first Estee Lauder perfume, and the one that a lot of people reckon is the scent that put American perfumery on the map. It is, of course, Youth Dew. Look, somebody likes her Youth Dew. <laughs> I think maybe somebody needs to have another bottle soon. But Youth Dew is genius. And if you have never tried the bath oil, you need to do so ASAP. Um, because it's just one of the best bath products ever made. Looks like a vintage Coca-Cola bottle, says Spaced Out. Well, this is fairly new, this Youth Dew. I think, I think... I think I gave her this one maybe about four years ago or so. She does like her youth dew and it really, really suits her actually. Now youth dew, a lot of people smell youth dew now and think, oh my goodness, you know, it's old lady-ish or whatever. That's their problem if they think that smelling like an old lady is a problem. Um, and I know that the idea of youth doesn't maybe necessarily go with this list, but this perfume doesn't have anything to do with youth, okay? And it's not even particularly dewy. It is one of the most intoxicating, reaching up to the heavens, meditative, balsamic, resinous, unduent, syrupy composition ever. I mean, to think that this was the first from Lauder is extraordinary because they she really thought, okay, we're, we're going for it. We are going out there and producing something that is going to have tons of authority, um, tons and tons, you know, it's it's hefty. It is a really, really hefty scent, huge throw, massive sillage, really, really distinctive, tons and tons of aldehydes at the top. You know, it's almost like a kind of rien of its time, except it's not leathery, it's balsamic. Um, uh, but it's also really romantic. So what wisdom would this be? I mean, you know, with some kind of is there, I don't know my Greek mythology very well, but is there a kind of Greek goddess who is both sensuous and yet also extremely wise and serene? I mean, somebody like, you know, somebody like Hera, what, what, what was she meant to have represented? So, so I wouldn't go like, you know, Aphrodite. Was Aphrodite Roman or no? The Roman version was Diana, right? Um some, somebody will somebody will help me out. It is a stinky brew indeed, says Gavin. It's not stinky at all. I haven't, haven't smelled youth to you in years, says Tamara. Sounds like it's me. 
Persephone, says Carotlin. Oh, I would, okay, yes, maybe we could go with Persephone. That sounds like Persephone, says Rake. Um, okay, well, let's go with Persephone. It's it's just so, so beautifully feminine. And at the same time, incredibly authoritative and wise and confident. Um, and also just completely and utterly timeless. It's just genius. And so, so, so wonderful that Lord is still make it. I haven't smelled the current iteration. Hopefully it's good. Athena, says Natasha. It could be, um, except I don't know what Athena was meant to have represented. The older I get, the younger youth you is, says Michele. Yeah, well, probably the, all of us could say that. Shan says, a mean class teacher wore youth you when I was in high school. I stress on mean. Oh, dear. That's a shame. Yeah, that's not very good when that happens. Rachel says, youth you makes me think of Hestia, the Greek goddess of the hearth and home. Oh, I like that. Maybe somebody like that then. Let's go with her. Artemis is the Greek Diana, says Nancy. Okay, so not Aphrodite. So no, Aphrodite and Venus, right? It would be Aphrodite and Venus would be the pairing. I had an extract youth to you about 25 years ago. Very good. Ah, so not a Kardashian, says Ashfaq. No, probably not a Kardashian. We're down to the last two on this list of top 10 cents for winter 2023. And number nine is a brand new acquisition. Now, it just in a very, very recent video, I had a tiny vial of this and I was so taken with it that I'm afraid I just had to treat myself to a bottle. That This is, I, I love this stuff, one of my favourites of the year straight away, and it's the other one composed by Christopher Sheldrake. So from this year, from Roberto Greco, this is Roque, which apparently means horse, as in your voice going horse in French. So now I can show you the bottle, because I have got the bottle. Um, Ugh, this this stuff. I'm, I need to be careful because it's a limited edition, right? I want to wear it endlessly. Only 500 bottles have been made. And I'm going to try describing it now, or you can watch the review video that was, I think actually it's the video before the Madonna video. Um, Gavin says, did they send you the bottle or did you buy it? No, 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 I got it myself. I, as far as I know, the brand doesn't even know that, that I reviewed it. Um, but the trouble is, you know, it's it's a limited edition. And so you kind of think, I love it and I want to wear it, but I also don't want it to to, to end. Now, it is, um, if we had to pick a single fragrance category for it to, to be a part of, it, it's a leather. Um, it's so good. But it's a, it's a greeny, tobacco-y sort of leather, lots and lots of shades of Sheldrake's own Coromandel. But also, when I was wearing it the other day, it made me think, because it was something bugging me, it was reminding me of something. It reminds me of Corpus Equus from Naomi Goodseer. I forget who made that. Was it Dusha Four as well who made Corpus Equus? Which is this really, really fantastic equine leather that feels really, really spirited. You can kind of feel the musculature of some of a beautiful horse underneath it. You, you feel the heat of the body. You feel the fleshiness of the body. Um, but but with Corpus Equus, I mean, I, I adore Corpus Equus, it, it sometimes comes across as a little bit too strident and maybe a little bit too bitter. This doesn't do any of that. This doesn't have the same sillage and the same throw as Corpus Equus. It's, it's much, much more sort of restrained, although extremely long lasting. Um, but it's just, just heavenly. And this would be the wisdom... I kind of what what sort of wisdom would this be? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what some. I mean, I'm all I'm picturing now is a kind of centaur, but I don't know what centaurs were supposed to represent in mythology. Are centaurs wise creatures? I don't know. Somebody look it up and tell me. Um, I have Corpus um, Equus on the way. Says PM. Uh, Corpus Equus is incredible. Says um, Zeus in disguise as a tramp says Gavin. Or maybe Zeus in disguise as a centaur. Could we go with that one, maybe? Possibly? Somebody tell me what centaurs were supposed to be. Ashfaq says, um, Leather and Mr. P are positively correlated. Yeah, I think we probably are. Uh, I was about to mention uh, that Naomi Goodseer. Is the mushroom accord prominent, says Paroli? Yes, and it's fascinating. It is much more fungal as well. Than, than the Naomi Goodser. Mushroom accords tend to make my skin crawl. Ah, okay, well then try it on skin first. Um, 
Centaurs are supposed to be scholarly, I think, says Gavin. Okay, well, let's let's go with scholarly. Scholarly and suave. Um, they trained the ancient heroes like Hercules, says Maudlin. Ah, see, if I knew that, I had forgotten. Most centaurs weren't wise, but there were exceptions. Chiron was a tutor. Well, we'll go with him then, shall we? And Nancy says centaurs combine the instinctive and logical human qualities. Ah, okay. So is that why Sagittarians are... Because I'm a Sagittarian. Okay. So maybe maybe this is all kind of making sense now. I'm wearing Corpus Equus right now, says Sister Papa. Oh, oh well, you smell amazing. Um, I think you'd like Cheval d'Arabie from Sultan Pasha Atar, says Ashwak. It has a stunning leather record that hums throughout. Is it your birthday today, says Gavin? No, it is not my birthday today. Why would it be my birthday today? Um, okay. And finally, 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 the, the the perfume that kind of started this list. A lot of you are going to start swooning now, folks, because this is this is beautiful. Let's do a little bit of a rearranging thing so that I can create a nice. St Actually, no, that's going to bug me. Where can because this next bottle that's coming is quite small, so I need a good space for it. Oh, sorry, carousel. Okay, so from 1912, which makes it the um, oldest perfume on this list. From Monsieur Jacques Garlin, I wonder if you'll agree with this. And this is an extra, but this is this is a recent, you know, current formulation extra. It's not Mitsuko. I didn't go with Mitsuko, actually, and I didn't go with Jiki either. I went with I went with Leur Bleu. So now you get to hate me and tell me that I've chosen the wrong one. Um, not Jiki. You're all thinking Jiki, which is interesting. Um, I cannot believe that even though this is an extra, all I'm going to do is just dip a blotter into it. Leur Bleu, I find so beautifully haunting and melancholy, but not in the same way as um, Après Londe. Uh All love for Leur Bleu, says Isaac. Um, wasn't this the Queen's perfume, says Big Miss Cabbage? Well, a lot of people have said that, but I mean, she probably wore so many perfumes. You know, look at the age that she lived to. Wisdom through experience, haunting melancholy. Yes, absolutely, that kind of thing. Leur Bleu for winter? Mmm, says Sister Pa. Why not? You can wear anything in the winter, really. Um, Leur Bleu extra, most wonderful. Yes, I mean, a lot of people say that this is, you know, like their sort of ultimate vanilla scent. But calling it the ultimate anything scent, it was so reductive because, of course, like so many Garlins from that time, it is completely symphonic. And yes, you can you can pick out the vanilla, you can pick out the iris note, you can pick out the, the herbs that are supposedly in that Garlinade, you can pick out the woods. But it's just... I think, I think this is... Th this is the most timeless of them. I think this is the sort of wisdom that maybe if we're all, if we're fortunate, the wisdom that will finally come to us the moment, oh, I don't want to end on this note, but this is how I'm kind of feeling at the moment, the, the moment when we, we finally leave this earth. And I hope that when that happens, I was going to say if, <laughs> when that happens, we all have a kind of moment of real peace and contentment and bliss and feeling at one with everything. I think that's what Leur Bleu is to me, which is why I find it difficult to wear, um, because it it it's it's quite it's quite confronting and so profound. Yeah, it, it's it's just it's just about the vastness of wisdom and how you need to accept that you are never ever ever going to know everything. Um, What's the line in that gold frap song with Utopia? I'm I'm super brain. I know everything. You know, this is the kind of scent that tells you that you can't. Um, Oris says, I would love to smell like the old lady on the Titanic. Hmm. Did she wear Leur Bleu? Um, one of the perfumes that makes me love this art, says Barbara. Yes, absolutely. My, me too. Um, time for a Ramsey stream. Sultan Pasha wins this day, says Dusan. Well, because I've gone over as well, because I started late. So thank you very much for watching. Head on over to Ramsey if he's got a special guest. Uh, enjoy whatever it is that you're going to wear this winter. Stay tuned to social media for details of more videos coming your way. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I will see you soon. Until then, take care. Bye now.